Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. These two commandments hang over the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. to God on high and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God,
us pray. Lord, we beseech thee, grant thy people grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh, and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow thee, the only God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything ye are enriched by him, in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end that he may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here are the Thanks. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel is written in the 22nd chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 34th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When the Pharisees had heard that Jesus had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? They say unto him, The son of David. He saith unto them, How then doth David in spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? And no man was able to answer him a word. Neither durst any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Well, the weather is perfect. The smoke is gone. Uh, we can actually go outside. And so naturally, since we can go outside, they'll let you inside the restaurant, but that's okay. We can go, you can go either way. You can, have, you can have your choice and it's all right. Things are getting a little bit better. I'm happy to hear it. Hope it continues to go in this vein. I have, oh, here we go. I don't have to tell any of you this, so I don't know why I'm saying it, but we are on Zoom and in person. You who are on in person know this and on Zoom, you know that too, but you know that we're here too. So anyway, all services will be conducted like this. Our Sunday services are both a mass early and late and again, Wednesday evening. But if you have during this COVID time gotten to really enjoy even songs sung like we did or something else that you'd like to see, uh, you're free to ask for it. I'm free to say no, but I might say yes. Uh, anyway, we can 
we can adjust. We, we are growing through this uh, time of stuff. They say very much, and I think it's a, it's a proper proverb that adversity gives opportunity for, for innovation, advancement, learning. So we've been learning. Our Anglican church women wish to thank you for, and our sponsors for the women's resource clinic gifts that you've given of $5 a month. If you want to add yourself to that, it's not too late. Shoe boxes for Samaritan's Purse. You will remember the shoe box program we've had in years past. We were even heading it up in Chico at one time, but uh, we still encourage people to do this ministry where in a shoe box sized uh, box that you provide toys for children of various ages, their school supplies and sundry items and uh, maybe hygiene items. So things that would go well for a child of a particular age they are packaged box sent overseas to every kind of country everywhere in the world for Christmas. Uh, if somebody in the church would like to head up, and this is not a big job, just a little bit of organization, and have somebody other than me pushing it on, on you, uh, see me about it, because I have a couple of pieces of documentation, and we have the ready-made shoe boxes here left from the previous year, uh, which we can do again this year. I think it's going to come up, though, about, about within the next month. We should have these in so talk to me tell me your interest in this or if you just want one of the shoe boxes and do it yourself say so i'm happy to give it to you you don't have to be in charge you can just say so our daily offices uh, are offered on in the weekdays morning and evening prayer by deacon faith and ben and claire who read uh, beautifully into a podcast which means an audio uh, recording of the services you can participate simply on your iPhone, iPad, I, whatever, I, 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 and you can get there by going to our church website. If you don't know how to dial it in, our website has the little prayer book, push the little prayer book, you'll go right there. Then you can just uh, bookmark that and go there every time. Uh, it's a wonderful service. Thank you, all three of you, for putting that out. And I think it's going out throughout the diocese and throughout the province. And even throughout our world, people are discovering that. How many uh, countries are, are we monitoring it? Got any sense of the? That's great, see? More than 15 countries? Yes. Um, there you go. More than 15 countries have at least tried Yeah. Well, that's, I think that's saying something, yeah. Yeah. Yes, the ale drinkers win again. <laughs> okay, Vestry is going to meet today in person and on Zoom. So those Vestry people who know they, who they are will meet me in the Vestry room or they'll meet me on computer, but we'll be together again and do the Vestry thing. And uh, because we are in the sort of semi-post-COVID world, we're still in the restrictions, we can't share our books with you just yet, but I, I'm hoping pretty soon we can distribute those in the pews. They're beautiful, brand new, all of them. Uh, communion isn't one kind only, just the bread, uh, because of the complications of doing both kinds, but it's still all of Jesus, so you aren't missing anything. And if you wish to give your gift to the church, you can drop it in there uh, on that thing. We're not going to pass the plate around so multiple hands on things don't happen just drop your envelope in there and or send it into the church as you have been doing or via the online service. It's all good and we're all very thankful and it's pretty much good. The, um, you should probably by yesterday or tomorrow be receiving our statement. We usually give it in July to give you a mid-year mid statement, but nothing made any sense in July, if you remember July. Uh, it was nuts. So I didn't want to take a benchmark on us then so we waited until three quarters of the way through the year and you can see just, just about where you are in your pledge so that you know that you're doing okay. That's all, basically. And we'll give you a report at the end of the year for tax purposes, but this is just a checkpoint to see that you're fine. Uh, by all I can tell, it looks like the giving is really good. So we're really happy about that and the participation is good. So, so why don't we sing a song? Hymn number 328. Two thirty eights. Two thirty eight.
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Can we be good enough? Isn't this our Christian dilemma made apparent when we read some passage of New Testament scriptures like where St. John says, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that not loveth not his brother. Or when Jesus says, Be ye perfect, therefore, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. If we ask what perfection, even more so what sin means, well, often we run into the Ten Commandments. Now, the Ten Commandments are smooth sailing mostly, if we view them in their extreme interpretation. Don't steal. Okay. Adultery is out, mm, right? No murder, got it. Covet, no. False testimony, well, that's courtroom stuff. Okay, I'm good. Well, then we hear Jesus on the mount saying, if we look on a woman with lust, we've started down the road to adultery. If we hate someone, it's punishable because it's in the same character as murder. Now we're troubled. Nobody can live that perfectly. It's not realistic. The early Christians were often bothered by this tension between our intention to follow Christ and our not being able to perform it. What is our intent? To follow him, live like he did, use him as our constant measuring stick? Or is it our intention simply not to follow him? Are we on the boat? Or are we on the shore? If you have one foot on each, you know, you're going to get wet. This is a dilemma, and we know it. And we like the translations that, well, use a lot of words and leave us some wiggle room. Like the Amplified, which reads in John's epistle that I just quoted to you, no one who is born of God deliberately, knowingly, and habitually practices sin because God's seed, his principle of life, the essence of his righteous character, remains permanently in him who is born again, who is reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and set apart for his purpose. And he who is born again cannot habitually live a life characterized by sin because he is born of God and longs to please him. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are clearly identified. Anyone who does not practice righteousness, who does not seek from heaven, however, uh, oops, from, does not seek God's will in thought, action, and purpose, is not of God, nor is the one who does not unselfishly love his believing brother. Well, are we looking for the easy road, some clever philosophy, an escape clause, or are we seeking the perfect God? And if he is perfect, we are seeking perfection in him and in ourselves. Do we want the gospel simply as fire insurance? Then act like unbelievers when we do the things we know aren't good, but do them anyway. As St. Paul bemoans that the trouble is not with the law, for it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me, for I am all too human a slave to sin. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. God's will is for our, per our perfection. That is not for his sake, it's for ours. He knows that sin feels bad. It is bad. We fall back, we turn away from him, we beat ourselves up and sulk but then that other stream running, running in us tears at us, screams to be let out, calls
calls us hypocrites and wears us down. Our imperfection gets the upper hand and we mourn it, pray our prayers of sorrow and make oaths, vain oaths, never to do it again. God sees all of this and he's seen it from before time began because he knows everything even before it happens. It is not a shock to him. And he walked the earth in human life, sharing our sorrows for our sakes to give us the answer to this problem. If he has the answer, are we listening? All four gospel accounts tell of a day when three of his apostles came with Jesus to a mountaintop. Now watch out for mountaintops in the scriptures. Things happen up there. Moses received the law on the top of Mount Horeb. Elijah challenged 750 pagan priests with two altars on Mount Carmel, and God's flame fell on Elijah's offering. Now on this mountaintop, Jesus was transfigured. That is, his natural form was altered into brilliant white light. He stood like a lightning bolt in human form. Then the same Moses and Elijah appeared out of nowhere, joined Jesus in conversation, and Peter, James, and John fell into a swoon. When he could speak again, Peter offered a plan to build three shrines for the holy men so people might visit this mountain and see them and talk to them and pay homage to them. And God interrupted Peter's foolish talk. Come on, quiet, Peter. He said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Now, Peter and his fellow apostles were already convinced that Jesus was Messiah. And whatever that meant, they would see him through his role. But Moses and Elijah epitomized the lawgiver and the prophet, two sections of Jewish sacred writings, all authority found in them, and they were read each Sabbath in holy worship. The Father from heaven now, however, wanted the apostles to take another look. Moses and Elijah were come to consult with Jesus, God's son, while they consoled him as well. And he was commanding them, you've heard the law and the prophets, now you will hear from God's son. Stop thinking you have this figured out. There's so much more to know. Hear my son. On another day, a smart lawyer challenged Jesus about being holy, laying a trap of sorts for him. The kind of trap lawyers, lawyers like to set for a witness. What is the great commandment in the law? He asked. Whatever Jesus might say, hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. Probably. The lawyer could then say, don't you keep the Sabbath? What about idolatry? So you're in favor of murder? But Jesus, knowing this was the reason for his question, actually knew the right answer. He did not cite the Ten Commandments, which are examples of right living, but Deuteronomy, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. While the people stood wondering at his statement, he added, this is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Whatever our question is about the nature of God, the will of God, the standards of God, God's plan for us, his reason for creating us, our past, our future, and our next step, the answer truly is Jesus Christ. And we had a goofy thing in my childhood called the magic eight ball. It was shaped like a black ball on a pool table. And on the bottom was a little window. You asked a question and turned it over to read the answer that would appear in the window. Yes, count on it. No, or I have no idea. It was very stupid. And we knew that. It gave contradictory answers to the same question you asked twice. <clears throat> That's our human way to get answers 
Stupid. Do you want to know God's way now? <clears throat> Ever from the fall of mankind, people have been wild and have been vicious. It was horrible what they could do. And God even stopped it all with a huge flood, narrowing it down to one family to start all over. He kept having to separate out people who would listen to him from all the others and making the rules very, very basic. We've all heard an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, right? I thought that that was God's ultimate justice. No, that's how we become blind and toothless if we think that's the ultimate standard. No, this was about limiting retribution. It was a starting place. You've all watched Western movies, I suppose. You insult my boots and we're gonna face each other in the street. Frontier justice was all about escalation. God set a limit at equal punishment for equal offense and no more. Insult my boots and I'll say yours look funny too. Done. Well, now comes Jesus. Don't insult the guy's boots at all. Don't even think like that. Let it go. Turn the other cheek. Love your enemy. Give without seeking to get it back. Give him your cloak and your jacket. Both. Feed him. Love him. You sense the change here? It is a higher standard, but look, it's a standard of another whole sort. Love, not justice. Love, not bloodshed. Love, not getting over on top of somebody. We might strive all our lives to be as good as we can. And that ought to be our aim, or at least a measure of our progress. But Jesus, who is the answer, has given us the answer if we hear him. He is the one shining on the mountaintop. So what does he say? Love God with everything you have and love each other as equals. Then he gives a new commandment at his last supper, love one another as I have loved you. Now cynical people have suggested that simple humanitarian love, as we might define it ourselves, satisfies all of God's will. Give to the Easter seals and the St. Jude's hospital once a year at Christmas, call that love and feel that our other quirks will pass for humility. I'm human. No, the standard is still Jesus. Are we as good as he is? No, then you don't love nearly enough. And what about that first and greatest commandment? People try to reverse the order, make their weak gestures of love for mankind the ultimate good. It's not. It's not even good at all. Not without loving God first, which means believing in him, hearing him. So learn of him, stake your existence on him, follow him, shed your tears out to him, and make him your one true God. Let him define love for you. And now, Direct how your charity be spent and just how much he is Lord. So we have our dilemma. We should be perfect or intend to be perfect in his sight. We aren't anywhere close to that. He won't have imperfection in his eternal kingdom. So where are we? Again, he is the answer. That cross was his answer. He died to set our sins aside. We look at the cross and remember what he paid for each of our misdeeds. And we can get serious about it. He erased our sins with his own blood. It cost him. We get up now and keep walking. And we remember it is now about love, a changed nature, Christ-like in how we see him and how we see our fellow human beings. And by this discipline, we learn to live in him, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now you remember the, what our Lord Jesus Christ said, it is more blessed to live
to give than to receive. You don't have to get up now, but know that that's there. I'm going to.
fires that burned down to about 90 percent contained all around us and may not stay that way and get better only firefighters do leave a very big job they have to do four million acres in california emergency and for all police and law enforcement it's a terrible uh, job they've got to do in the face of uh, a bit of opposition i'm afraid that they will be able to adjust and do well and continue to serve and honor and for the medical technicians who are facing the disease in our nation at this time for america's return to christ we pray that this all of our crises will lead us to him who is the answer for all of them for iran mission and it's continuing in its ninth season broadcasting for women's resource clinic for the synod 2021 in april for chico for our COVID 19 recovery locally and throughout the world uh, this will very soon be uh, a fairly tame disease never to go away again but it, it can resort to being uh, as little as a tiny flu for california fires to be ended and not start up again just because some cloud might take advantage and for all of god's purposes done in us to us anybody have any special purposes we pray for those in armed service, especially at Gavin and Douglas. We pray for all travelers, for our children and our youth. And uh, we pray in the first service, I'll just mention this. At Park, we have a little blonde girl who grew up on the box. See, Tracy. The, uh, she is now going to college on a full load scholarship to Stanford. Yeah, she grew up. Anyway, on her birthday was just yesterday. Now, Mary, we didn't get a chance to bless you in person. Can we do that today? Mary Bedford, is it fair to tell people how old you are? Because he bragged about it. But I can't hear you. It's okay. Do you want to say, tell what birthday you're celebrating? No, that's up to you. The <laughs> <laughs> <Are you> dog ears? <laughs> last, last Sunday, very good night. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as the days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be, keeping her on spotted from the world. Strengthen her when she stands, comfort her when the scourge or sorrow. Raise her up when she falls, and in her heart may thy peace, which passes all understanding, but by all the days of her life through Jesus Christ. Oh, Amen. Let me just say this Ben and I have been having this conversation for a while. So we have fire, floods, pestilence all going on right now, but Mary's still alive, so the apocalypse is not coming. That's right. <laughs> Just a bump in the road. Just a bump in the road. <laughs> and the rapture didn't happen either, so. Right. <laughs> None of us would call. <laughs> Are there any anniversaries that we celebrate in here? Come back to see you guys. Come back to see you Although eternal God, creator, preserver of all mankind, giver of all spiritual grace, the author of everlasting life, send that blessing upon me as I service this man and this woman, and we bless my name, that they live in faith with each other, may surely perform and keep the vow and covenant betwixt them may, and they have a remaining perfect love and peace together, according to that law. Give thanks to God, beautiful weather, the end of the snow, the tailing of COVID, I hope you can say, and the uh, facing into the fall, which is dreadful. For Gretchen, being with a church tank and being down from Gretchen, um, uh, Oregon, uh, her, her husband, you all know, Father John Pennington, he died last February, was it not? 
had to wait months before a real service could be held for Orient because we were in the middle of the COVID announcement. July. Bishop Adams finally took a train up there to see you and do that for you. Uh, God bless his wonderful soul. He was the pen and remember this year some years ago, quite a few years ago, I was talking to Paul up there to get Ben and then the other So let's see. We celebrated our 60th wedding anniversary January. That's great. That's wonderful. Bless you. Thank you for taking a trip down to see us tonight. All right. We're thankful to God for all of these merit mercies. The heart of all this furnace for, for singing to God. So let's pray for the whole city of Christ. Almighty and ever living God, who by the holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, especially John, our Archbishop, and Donald, our Bishop, and other ministers, especially Brian and David Deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. He who did truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Devoutly need. Almighty God. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul said, this is a true saying. And worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John says, If any man sin, we have an advocate 
with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Give thanks unto Thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify Thy glorious name evermore praising thee and saying Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that Thou, Thy tender mercy, didst give Thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby His one oblation of Himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in His holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that His precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us, by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine that we receive in them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. 
and we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. Remember also, O Lord, thy servants and handmaidens who have gone before us with a sign of faith and are at rest in the sleep of peace. To these, O Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, we beseech thee to grant a place of refreshment, of light, and of peace. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee. O Father, almighty world without end, amen. Let us pray. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen Deliver us, we beseech thee, O Lord, from all evils, past, present, and to come, and at the intercession of the blessed, glorious, and ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God. With that of thy blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of Andrew, and all thy saints, favorably grant peace in our time, that by the help of thy mercy, we may ever be kept free from sin and safe from all disquietude. Do the same, Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth God, world without end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirits. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs unto thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, 
that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But seek the word of the name my soul shall be. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But seek the word of the name my soul shall be. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But seek the word of the name my soul shall be. Thank mm -hmm. you.
us pray. <clears throat> Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we beseech thee, Almighty God, that thy sanctifying power may effectually heal in us the wounds of sin and provide for us a remedy unto life everlasting through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And with thy spirit. Thanks be to God. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Hymn number 300.